मेकेनिजम ऑफ रेग्युलेशन ऑफ द होमियोस्टेसिस नेगेटिव फीडबैक मेकेनिजम फॉर एग्जाम्पल रेग्युलेशन ऑफ ब्लड प्रेशर रेग्युलेशन ऑफ थाइरोइड हॉर्मोन्स पॉजिटिव फीडबैक मेकेनिजम फॉर एग्जाम्पल ऑक्सीटोसिन इफेक्ट ऑन यूटरस एंड ब्लड क्लॉटिंग मेकेनिजम रिसेटिंग ऑफ सेट पॉइंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल बॉडी टेम्परेचर बाय द हाइपोथेलेमस एंड फीड फॉरवर्ड रेगुलेशन फॉर एग्जाम्पल लर्निंग एंड एक्सेट्रा सो नेगेटिव फीडबैक लूप होमियोस्टेसिस ऑफ आर्टेरियल ब्लड प्रेशर हाउ अवर बॉडी इज गोइंग टू मेंटेन द आर्टेरियल ब्लड प्रेशर टू अ नॉर्मल और अ कॉन्स्टेंट लेवल इंक्रीज आर्टेरियल ब्लड प्रेशर फॉर एग्जाम्पल ड्यू टू सम एबनॉर्मल कंडीशन देर इज अ इंक्रीज इन द आर्टेरियल ब्लड प्रेशर लेवल देन वॉट विल हैपन देर विल बी दी नेगेटिव फीडबैक मेकेनिज्म इज वर्किंग ओवर हियर एंड इट इज गोइंग टू डिक्रीज आर्टेरियल ब्लड प्रेशर टू अ नॉर्मल लेवल सो दिस इज द नेगेटिव फीडबैक लूप नेगेटिव फीडबैक लूप वॉट विल हैपन वंस द सर्टेन कंडीशन हैज बीन इंक्रीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल ब्लड प्रेशर ब्लड सी ओ टू लेवल then there are uh, something will happen inside our body so that it will going to reduce the arterial blood pressure as well as the reduce the uh, carbon dioxide concentration inside our body so this is the negative feedback loop means uh, negativity or negative response will be generated inside our body second negative feedback homeostasis of t3 and t4 t3 and t4 these are the thyroid hormones so once there is a increase in the t3 and t4 levels in the blood so there will be the inhibition of anterior pituitary and hypothalamus and uh, once this anterior pituitary and hypothalamus has been inhibited what will happen there is a decreased secretion of tsh and trh tsh is released from the anterior pituitary gland and uh, trh released from the hypothalamus so trh it is the thyroid releasing hormone and tsh it is the thyroid stimulating hormone once there is a decrease in the secretion of tsh and trh there is a decrease in secretion of t3 and t4 hormones by the thyroid gland and uh, once the decrease in the thyroid hormone level it brings increased level of t3 t4 back to the normal so here what will happen this negative feedback loop is activated only when the thyroid level or thyroid hormone level has been increased and uh, due to this all these procedures occurring inside our body it brings the t3 t4 level back to the normal condition all right so this is the negative feedback loop negative feedback loop work in such a condition when the certain substances has been increased so some type of activity or a procedures or some type of Uh, whatever the regulatory measures our body will take so that it will going to reduce the whatever the abnormal increase in the substance concentration to the normal level now the next glucose homeostasis the same thing of the negative feedback loop it is the glucose homeostasis now what will happen in the glucose homeostasis after the meal there is a increase in the blood glucose level that is the obvious condition now what will happen pancreatic ice lace of the langer hans it will stimulate with the this increase in the blood glucose level so this pancreatic ice lace of the langer hans and in this there is a presence of beta cell specifically secrete the insulin so there will be increase in the insulin level inside our blood and what will happen once the insulin level has been increased there is a increase in the cellular uptake of glucose this is the effect of this insulin and once the cellular uptake of glucose has been increased there is a decrease in the blood glucose level so whatever the there is a increase in the blood glucose level it will be coming back to the normal or the decrease in blood glucose level and once the blood glucose level is decrease it negatively inhibit the whatever the procedure occurring over here clear once this blood glucose level has been decrease all this procedure has been stopped okay till now we already saw the negative feedback loop now we begins with the positive feedback loop for example here it is the fall in the blood pressure 
now what will happen when the blood pressure become fall now it is the positive feedback loop so whatever thing is occurring it going to progress in the negative feedback loop there is a negativity or the negative response so that it is going to be stopped but in the positive feedback loop the once the procedure has been begins it going to progress to a level of severity so positive feedback loop once there is a marked fall in blood pressure so there will be the decrease blood supply to the heart obviously and uh, once the, there is a decrease in the blood supply to the heart there is a decrease in the myocardial contraction and once the, there is a decrease in the myocardial contraction there is a further fall in blood pressure so once the decrease in the myocardial contraction the heart is not able to pump the enough amount of the blood to the whole of the body and even to the heart and so there is a vicious cycle is occurring and it is the positive feedback loop and it obviously leads to the death of the patient this is what i told you about the critical conditions of the positive feedback loop now how the positive feedback loop going to help our body so positive feedback loop oxytocin effect on the uterus during the delivery of the baby whatever the procedure occurring inside the uterus baby and vagina and cervix this all under the control of positive feedback mechanism now let's begins from here head of baby pushes against the cervix so once the delivery process has been started inside the uterus of the mothers so here it is the cervix and uh, this is the baby and baby's head going to push the cervix now what will happen now impulses from the cervix transmitted to the brain so from here the nerve impulses or the stretch receptor has been activated and it uh, going to transmit the nerve impulse to the brain so brain stimulates the pituitary gland to secrete oxytocin once the brain has been stimulated it is going to stimulate the pituitary gland or the posterior pituitary gland to secrete the oxytocin oxytocin carried in blood stream to the uterus so obviously it is a hormone so it is released into the blood from the posterior pituitary gland and uh, it is going to reach the uterus and uh, what will happen oxytocin stimulates uterine contractions and pushes baby towards cervix so in turn oxytocin stimulates the uterine contraction and it pushes baby towards the cervix so here what will happen due to these uterine contractions the head of the baby moves downward and again it is going to stimulate the more and more number of stretch receptor of the cervix again the signal has been transmitted to the brain and again there is a larger amount of release of oxytocin and again there is a severity of the uterine contraction has been increased so this is the positive feedback mechanism and how it is going to help during the delivery process of the baby so here it is the example of oxytocin effect on the uterus now the positive feedback loop the another example it is the procedure of blood clotting what will happen in the procedure of blood clotting there is a rupture of the blood vessels so it will be activation of one of the clotting factors first of all and this one clotting factor going to activate another clotting factors in the vicinity of wherever there is a rupture of the blood vessel and all these clotting factors going to work together so there will be the formation of a clot factors in the clot further activate other factor so whatever the factor which are present inside this clot material it is again going to activate other factors so more and more clot formation has been occurring and uh, the whatever the rupture of the blood vessel has been stopped or the sealing of the rupture or the puncturing of the blood vessel has been take place but it can be hazardous also due to thrombosis if this clotting mechanism is uh, not working properly or if it is going to produce this blood clots inside the healthy blood vessels then it is going to be hazardous 
सो दिस इज वन मोर एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द पॉजिटिव फीडबैक लूप नाउ द रीसेटिंग ऑफ सेट पॉइंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल बॉडी टेम्परेचर बाय द हाइपोथेलेमस नाउ हाउ अवर बॉडी टेम्परेचर हैज बीन रेगुलेटेड थ्रू आउट द ईयर बिकॉज इन इंडिया देर आर थ्री डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ सीजन्स आर देयर विंटर समर एंड मॉनसून इन दिस कंडीशंस हाउ अवर बॉडी इज गोइंग टू रेगुलेट द बॉडी टेम्परेचर बाय रीसेटिंग ऑफ सेट पॉइंट सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी आर टेकिंग द विंटर कंडीशन सो देर इज अ डिक्रीज इन द रूम टेम्परेचर एंड वंस द रूम टेम्परेचर हैज बीन डिक्रीज देर इज अ इंक्रीज इन द हीट लॉस फ्रॉम द बॉडी Now what will happen whenever there is a increase in the heat loss from our body so there is a decrease in the body temperature now there are uh, different type of mechanisms working inside our body to gain the heat gain the heat is via the heat production or decrease in the heat loss both the things occurring simultaneously so how our body going to decrease in the heat loss so there is a constriction of the blood vessels so that whatever the heat loss occurring from the skin has been reduced and curling up so it is the behavioral condition it is also going to reduce the heat loss from the body and the severing it is the procedure of heat production of the heat generation inside our body when both these conditions occur simultaneously so whatever the uh body temperature has been reduced it is going to be back to the normal condition so this is how there is a resetting of the thermal set point of the body temperature in the maintenance of constant level of body temperature so it is the maintenance of homeostasis and how our body going to maintain the internal environment of our body for example body temperature to a normal level so all these things which are occurring inside our body so that even if our body is exposed to winter summer or monsoon season but still our internal body temperature has been regulated to a normal level now the feed forward mechanisms how this mechanism works so brain initiate the movement and once the movement has been initiated it has been transferred to the body parts so that there is a execution of the body movement occurs and it also transport to the different areas of the brain so once the body movement has been occur and if there is a some type of disturbance in the movement of the body it has been sensed by the these receptors which are present in the muscles and these receptors going to send whatever the defect in the normal execution of the movement to the different area of the brain so both from this there is a whatever the defect has been seen to the different areas of the brain as well whatever the plan of the movement has been set to the different area of the brain and once this uh, plan of the movement actual plan of the movement and uh, defect signal arrive to the uh, areas of the brain then they will be analyze what is the defect occurring inside this movement and uh, once the there is a correction has been made inside the areas of the brain and again the signal has been sent to the body parts for the actual corrected movement so that's how there is a posture is adjusted so here whatever the pathway is occurring it is the feed forward for anticipated postural disturbances and whatever the pathway is occurring over here it is the feedback for unanticipated postural disturbances i hope you understand the feed forward mechanism and if you want to learn this feed forward mechanism in detail try to see my videos on the cerebellum